special thanks to Patreon supporter Archduke Engel for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gary Tofu here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare Vehicle Tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Panther KF-51. The KF-51 is a main battle tank that is currently under development by Rheinmetall Land Systems. It was unveiled publicly at the Euro Satori Defense Exhibition on June 13th, 2022. KF is short for Kettenfahrzeug, uh, which translates to tracked vehicle. The design is intended to mark a departure from the uh, preceding generation of Western MBTs by introducing a new turret armed with an auto-loaded 130mm main gun, reducing weight through greater reliance on active rather than passive protection, and facilitating teaming with uncrewed platforms by providing space inside the hole for a dedicated systems operator or unit commander. Ryan Metal has suggested that the KF-51 could be production ready by 2026. Um, there's been a lot of excitement for this uh, tank after it was unveiled. I've had a lot of actually requests come in for it and I'm happy to kind of go ahead and deliver upon those requests. Um, this tank is pretty cool. It's probably going to be the future um, MBT really we're going to see used by Germany and I would say some other European countries that do use the Leopard. This is kind of pretty much the Leopard replacement. Um, but it's a uh, it's a pretty cool tank and really kind of futuristic and uh, all that. So it'll be interesting to kind of see where this tank goes and if we do actually end up seeing this on the battlefield and all that. Now since this is a very uh, kind of, I don't want to say very early, but it is a prototype vehicle, a lot of things are subject to change. So hopefully this tutorial does last and stand the test of time as uh, changes and all that stuff could be made to this vehicle. Um, again, the color scheme here is based off of the one that was unveiled. Um, so the actual camouflage patterns and all that stuff are definitely going to be subject to change uh, depending on um, the basically country that ends up purchasing these. So um, just keep those in mind. Um, obviously you're free to change up the design or whatever, but I wanted to kind of go ahead and build the exact prototype that we saw sitting at the um, convention. Um, before we go ahead and jump and take a look at this build though, I do want to go ahead and give special thanks to Patreon supporter Archduke Peck for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions, where you can go and place a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so or whatever your request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is going to be down in the video description. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the KF-51 Panther. So the vehicle itself is a pretty straightforward design. It's really nothing too complex in terms of design. Uh, it's like most modern tanks and trying to go for a more sleeker type approach. Um, we have the main gun here. Again, this is a 130 millimeter gun, which kind of breaks off from the traditional 120 millimeter that's been implemented on uh, main battle tanks for quite a long time. Uh, we have the little driver's viewport here located in the front. Uh, we then have, again, more of the sights and stuff like that for the um, you know gunner and all that stuff. Um, as you uh, go back further back, we have our hatches up on top here, as well as a uh, kind of camera, 360 degree camera located up on top. Uh, continuing on back, we have our little smoke grenade dispensers here, kind of integrated into the turret, which looks really nice. And then we also have our automated uh, gun here mounted on the rear of the vehicle as well. And uh, on the side here, you can see we have, or you can really kind of get a good idea of the camouflage on the side here, which I don't really know if you can really consider it camouflage, but it's basically the color scheme with uh, black, kind of a, it's kind of a weird kind of beige kind of color. Um, looking at pictures, it's not really a green, but it's kind of like an off green. Um, but I went ahead and just used some, you know, just solid green for it. And then obviously we have that really bright lime green that is used on the actual variant itself, or the actual uh, model. And uh, the back of the tank here, again, nothing too fancy or special. And obviously the other side here, pretty much exactly the same. So overall, pretty cool build. Um, it's pretty simplistic in design, so it shouldn't be anything too complex. It just has a lot of detail with that camo, which I think the camo definitely adds that little bit of extra pop to it, uh, which, uh, you know, in return adds that detail. Uh, overall, interesting build. Should be a fun one to add to your worlds. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our first layer. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here. We will be going ahead and starting with layer number one. For layer one to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down two narrow breakups downstairs, 
just like this going across. We're going to then place down two black shulker boxes back to back. An item frame on the one side, so the left side here, and then a green terracotta block, and then a dark oak button if you are on Java. Just a side note here is that item frames and buttons can be placed in the same block space. Same thing with item frames and signs if you are on Java. If you're on a different version other than Java, you will not be able to do that. So whenever we place down an item frame and a button or a sign with it, just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the other block if you are not on Java. Um, anyways, though, continuing on, we're going to take our polished black stone stairs and place down two rows of two. Then again, we're gonna take our black shulker boxes, place down two like this across. And there are uh, two rows of two here of polished black stone stairs. Then again, our black shulker boxes. Then again, our polished black stone stairs. And lastly, one more time, we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of two here of shulker boxes. So it should look something like this here for your track base. On all of the shulker boxes, we will place down our item frames, our green stained glass panes, and again, our buttons here if applicable. So just like that. After that's all done, we want to go ahead and then place down two narrow brick slabs here. Two narrow brick top slabs coming off those slabs like that. We're going to go then take our dark prismarine slabs. We're going to place down our row of three coming off those slabs there. And then going up to the front here, we're going to place down our row of three coming off these narrow brick up down stairs as well. We're going to go ahead and then fill in the space down the middle here with our uh, dark prismarine slabs. So just like this. And we'll completely fill this in like so. After that is all filled in, we're going to go ahead and do the same design for our tracks just over here to this side. So again, I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit quicker as we've already covered the other side there in kind of greater and I guess you could say slower detail. And of course, don't forget your item frame placement. And of course your buttons here for Java players. After that's all done, uh, we then have one other step here and this is gonna be making these banners here. Now these banners are really simple. I'm not gonna go ahead and go into a loom and actually show you guys how to make them because I feel like they're pretty straightforward as they are. Uh, but basically for the banners here, it's really straightforward. You're gonna have two uh, black banners and you're gonna go ahead and do a line of green, split the banner in half vertically on the right side of one banner and a line of green vertically on the left side of the other. We'll then do a black horizontal line through both banners and you'll basically have this design here. What we're gonna do with this design is we're gonna go ahead and go up to the polished black stone stairs and we're gonna go ahead and place down these banners so that the green is facing toward each other. So it's gonna be like that and the same thing over here. And this just kind of helps create our road wheels, kind of keep that color, that look a little bit more consistent and all that stuff. And it just really helps look the, uh, improve the overall look there of the wheels. Anyways, though, that right there is going to include everything we have there for layer number one of the build. And with that, we'll go ahead and dive into layer number two. So moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer two. One thing I do want to cover real quick is that we will not be going ahead and doing the camouflage for the actual in the actual tutorial portion we will be talking about the camouflage at the end of the video um kind of a separate little thing just because it's easier to just kind of build this in one solid color and then obviously if you want to go back and add the camouflage then you'll be more than welcome to do so um but let's go ahead and kind of dive into this so we're going to be going ahead and making this obviously totally in a green um color scheme so this kind of normal or darker green on the tank um, that is the color we're going to be making the entire vehicle out of. So we're going to start off by taking our green terracotta and we're just going to go ahead and place down a row of seven going all the way across this front section here. We're going to go ahead and then place down two narrow brick walls on both ends and then we want to place down our row of three of green stained glass panes across the middle here. We then want to place down an item frame coming off those glass panes as well as a trip bar hook in the item frames rotated to face. So trip bar hooks are in the item frames and rotated to face downwards like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta and we want to go ahead and build a row of seven. So another row going back. So we have a second row of seven and we're going to keep doing this back quite a bit. So we have a row of seven again. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and after 11 rows of 7, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 5 going across, and we then want to go ahead and place down a dark prismarine upside down stair in the corners there like so. We're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta, and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 5 across the center here again. This time we're going to go ahead and place down a green shulker box to both ends, 
Come off the shulker boxes, we're going to place down an item frame. And in the item frame, we're going to place down a cobweb for our rear sprocket wheels. And then again, for Java players, we'll take a dark liquid button and we're just going to place it here on the side of the shulker box as well. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our uh, dark prismarine stairs. We're going to place down one, two, three, upside down stairs across the middle. And they're going to place down one and two upside down stairs like this, one and two like that to the sides there. Uh, we'll then take our dark oak trap doors. You're going to place down dark oak trap doors on the back here of those uh, upside down stairs. And then also we're going to place down two item frames there in the center. Um, in the item frames, we're going to place down red, con or, uh, yeah, red concrete. And if you're on Java, we can go ahead and add on to this by taking our dark oak signs and place them on the side here of those stairs as well. So it looks like that there on the back. Um, with that all done though, that is uh, almost it for this layer. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our green, green stained glass panes going off the narrow brick walls. We're going to place down a row of green stained glass panes going all the way along the side here of the tank, all the way to this uh, dark prismarine stair. And that'll be our last one. And same thing over here, all the way along the side here, like that. After that's all done, that right there is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for layer number two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down two daylight detectors on top of these narrow brick walls like this to both sides, and we're going to go ahead and then turn these to the night mode, just like that. In the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and place down, and again, three daylight detectors. These will stay just on the day mode. We're going to go ahead and place down an item frame here to both sides. In that item frame, we're going to place down a white bed, rotated to be horizontal. And then in the item frame, or rather on the slab there, again, we're going to place down a sign there for Java players. So, same thing there on both sides. After that, we're going to take our dark prismarine slabs. We're going to place down a row of seven across. Then we're going to place down a zombie head at a slight angle on these glass panes. Then after we have that done, we want to go ahead and then grab our pistons, and we're going to place down a row of pistons. An alternative to this could also be to use the end portal frames if you are on a different version other than Java, um, because we will be using a tool called the debug stick um, to go ahead and modify these pistons. So again, you can use end portal frames, or you could use dark prismarine stairs, um, which real quick we'll show, uh, which you can place like this. But again, the pistons here are probably going to be the best option, um, but end portal frames are, go are a good second. Um, also, we're going to go ahead and replace this um, third from right uh, piston with a smoker instead for that driver's viewport. Then on the sides here, we're just going to go ahead and place down a zombie head to both sides. And we want to go ahead and then take our green terracotta and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going all the way across. We're going to go ahead and take our green terracotta and we're going to go ahead and continue building rows of seven across. So we have two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and we're going to go and build eleven rows back. At this point in time, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some black concrete, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and actually it's going to be four or five rather, uh, five black concrete across the back here. We're going to go ahead and place down a green concrete block there in the corners. We'll then take our green stained glass panes and we're just going to go ahead and run them all the way along the side here of the green terracotta. And we're even going to go ahead and wrap it around like this on the corners. And again, same thing over here on this side. After that, uh, we then want to take our black stained glass panes and we're just going to place down a row of black stained glass panes across the back there for the kind of vents and all that on the rear. We'll also place down an item frame on these glass panes here. In those item frames, we're going to place down some red beds, which we're going to rotate so that the white is facing toward the middle. And then we're going to place down a dark oak sign again for Java players. After that is all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for um, this layer. And yeah, as you can see, this is pretty much all we have so far. Pretty simple and straightforward um, design so far. Uh, but yeah, that is going to wrap up layer three, and let's move on up to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take our green terracotta, and we're going to go ahead and just place down a row of five. This is going to be kind of in the middle of that third row of seven that's going back from the pistons there. After you have that row uh, set up, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, dark prismarine uh, top slab, or rather actually... This is going to be a row of seven. So we're just going to make this row of seven all the way across. Um, however, once you get to this point, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark prismarine um, top slab to both sides like so. 
And then at this point, um, depending on your version, if you're on if you're not on Java, I'd recommend going ahead and grabbing your Prismarine stairs and placing down a row of five of Prismarine upside down stairs. If you are not on Java, I'd recommend going ahead and grabbing your pistons. And we're going to be going ahead and building a row of five of pistons that are going to be facing upside down. So you may need to break a block or two and kind of get yourself positioned here a little bit better uh, in the vehicle. But basically you're going to have your upside down pistons. They're going to be coming off these blocks. So we have our pistons that are going to look like this. And again, you might have to break some blocks here, unfortunately, just to kind of get these to be put in. But you basically want a row of five that go across like that. And we'll fill in any blocks we did break. Now, once you get to this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark prismarine top slab. Coming off these two points there. And we're going to go ahead and place down one more top slab going toward the middle. In this very middle space, we're going to go ahead and place down another upside down piston. So again, using the same techniques as before. Then we want to go ahead and place down a second piston going forward from this one. Again, upside down. Uh, if you're not on Java, I would recommend just using some dark prismarine top slabs instead as an alternative. Uh, we'll then take our dark oak trapdoors and we're also going to place down one, two, and one, one, two, and one, like that for the front there. We'll then take our dark prismarine, we're going to place down a top slab going forward, and then a second top slab, and that's all we're going to do for the barrel for right now. Continuing on, we're going to take our green terracotta. We're going to place down another row of seven going across the back here. We'll then follow this up with a third row. And then a one last fourth row going across. We'll then place down a row of five across the center here. Then a dark prismarine top slab to both sides. A dark prismarine stair. And then a row of three of green terracotta. We'll then take our uh, daylight detectors. We're going to place these in the sides or on the sides there. And then taking our dark prismarine, we're going to place down a row of seven all the way across. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab our deep slate tiles. We're going to place down a row of three and then two slabs out to the sides there. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of five across, another slab to both sides, and then another row of five across with, a, again, a slab to both sides there. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven zombie heads all the way across the back there of the vehicle. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to basically complete everything we have here for this layer. So again, looking at it from the top down view, this is what we have so far. Anyways though, with that out of the way, that's it for layer four. And with that, we'll go ahead and dive into layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna go ahead and begin with by going ahead and placing down a row of pistons, starting on top of this one, one, two, three, four. You can also use your end portal frames um, if you are on a different version, like we did for this section here or some um, some uh, dark prismarine slabs also. We're gonna go and then go forward one, two, three, four dark prismarine slabs and then a uh, polished blackstone slab on the very tip here of the barrel. So like that. We're gonna go then take our zombie heads, we're gonna place down one, two, three on the first three pistons. This will be done on both sides there. Then we wanna go ahead and grab some dark prismarine. We're gonna place down two slabs out to the sides here as well as a dark oak trap door on top of these two on both sides. We then want to place down a green terracotta block here. Then on the left side of the turret, so the side here, we're going to place down two pistons, or again the end portal frames, and then a slab to the side. On the other side here, we're going to place down a slab, then a piston, and then another slab. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, prismarine stair that's going to go back from the slabs on the sides here. And then we're gonna take our green terracotta, we're gonna build one, two, three, and then one. And in that middle space right there, that little indent, we're gonna place on a black concrete block, like so. After that, uh, we wanna go ahead and then take our green terracotta, we're gonna place down a row of five across. This is gonna be followed with a second row, a third row, four, five, six, and seven rows of five going all the way across. After we have that done, we want to go and then grab our monster cobblestone walls. We're going to build one, two, three, four back. And over here, same thing. One, two, three, four. We'll then take our green stained glass panes. We're going to go back one, two, three. And over here, same thing. One, two, three. We'll then take our stairs. We're going to place down a row of five of stairs going across. Then a zombie head on the side of the stairs. Or rather, actually, my bad. It's not stairs. It's actually supposed to be top slabs. So just go ahead and make that quick swap. So yeah, you have your top slabs across like that. 
And once we have that all finished there, that is going to basically wrap up this layer. At this point in time, for Java players, we're going to go ahead and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here, we'll press enter and we'll get this glowing stick. What we can do is we can go ahead and go to our pistons. We can left click them until we get selected, extended, false. And then we'll right click these to get rid of that wood portion like that. And then going to the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So we're just getting rid of all of that uh, wood there, and that's going to help with our sloping here. So once we get that all taken care of and we take a look back at it, you can see here that we have a lot nicer of a shape kind of, um, you know, created here for the um, vehicle and just the sloping and all that stuff. So it looks really good. Um, it's coming together, and that right there is going to include everything we have there for layer 5. At this point in time with the build, we'll be going ahead and just moving into our last final layers to go ahead and complete the tank. Alright guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers 6 through 10. For these layers to get started with, we're going to take our daylight detectors, we're going to place down 1, 2 here, and then we're going to go and then take our dark oak with trap doors, we're going to place down 2 like that. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a third trap door over, a zombie head, a 45, and then another zombie head like that. We'll then place down a spruce wood slab here in the center, daylight detector, spruce wood slab, and then another daylight detector. Make sure your trap doors do remain closed. Then along the sides here, we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, dark prismarine slabs, and same thing here, one, two, three, four. In the space in the center here, we're going to place down a row of three of daylight detectors. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, and then a green terracotta block. Then another row of three of daylight detectors, and then a second row of three going across. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark prismarine stair here. And behind that, we want to go in very simply, place down an anvil, like so, and then a dark oak with sign coming off the anvil, like that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, dark oak with uh, fence post to both sides, and then we're going to place down two daylight detectors across the center here, followed by another dark prismarine slab to the sides there. And then we'll take our dark oak with trap doors and place down one, two across that center space, and we'll make sure that we, those are closed. Now, after that is all complete, we're going to go ahead and grab a mossy cobblestone wall and we're going to place it down on top of this uh, green terracotta block. We'll then wrap these three sides of the wall with um, trap doors. We'll then place down an item frame like that, then a blank bed in the item frame. And lastly, we'll take some dark liquid signs and we're just going to place down a dark liquid sign on the side here of the wall as well. Now, once we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and then go to our fence post here, and we're going to go ahead and take our iron bars, and we're just going to go ahead and go up from those fence posts. A total of four up. Just like so. Then when it comes to this uh, automated machine gun back here, you have the option of either placing down a top slab of, um, um, of the dark prismarine, or you can place down a piston. So kind of up to you guys and what you guys want to do um, by piston we're going to be placing this upside down um, like that and obviously using our debug stick here in a second so again you have those two options to go from we're going to go ahead and place down a black or rather sorry just a green circle box on the side of the piston as well as a dark oak with sign on this side again the same thing would apply to the slab if you place a slab then a zombie head a dark prismarine top slab going forward we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a end rod and a chain we're going to place on an end rod and a chain going forward. And lastly, we'll just take some green carpet and we're just gonna place down some green carpet on top of these blocks here for a little bit more consistent coloring. And you basically have that automated machine gun complete. Um, also, again, don't forget to take your debug stick if you did place the piston and just right click it to get rid of that wood portion. Anyways though, that right there is pretty much it for layer six for 10. And with that, I'm just gonna conclude my des basic design here for the vehicle, uh, the KF-51. Uh, we will next be kind of moving into a section where we'll talk about the camouflage a little bit more about the vehicle um, and kind of go over what I did for mine and how you can go ahead and do it for yourself. So with that, that's it for the main kind of building here for this vehicle. And let's go ahead and talk about the camouflage. All right, guys, so when it comes to the camouflage of the vehicle, it's kind of best to pull up a reference image when it comes to actually going ahead and building it. Um, I would recommend, obviously, Googling the KF-51 and trying to see the camouflage for yourself. It is a digital camouflage, and really, they're kind of difficult to represent in Minecraft just due to the fact that we're working, instead of small sections, we're working kind of on a meter by, by meter block. Um, so the digital camouflage really doesn't work too great, but, I mean, I think that the at least the way I was able to do it at least somewhat kind of helps 
I guess, show that recognizability of the camouflage that this vehicle has been seen in. Um, so again, it's kind of up to you guys on what you guys want to do. You guys obviously don't have to do this, but you guys definitely can if you want to. When it comes to the camouflage, I really don't have, you don't have too many options. Unfortunately, we don't have any light green slabs or stairs, so you're kind of out of luck on that one. Um, but for the light green, I did basically some lime uh, concrete and some green or some lime green stained glass paints. And it works really well on representing that color. Um, unfortunately, you're not able to get it throughout all parts of the vehicle, but you are able to get it kind of on the good kind of side profiles, which are really going to kind of at least, you know, highlight and really kind of, I guess, show off the most. Um, and then for the black, I went ahead and did some um, black concrete, black stained glass panes, some polished black stone walls, stairs, all that stuff are something that you can go ahead and obviously incorporate into the vehicle as well. It's uh, pretty straightforward. There really isn't anything too complex when it comes to the camouflage. Again, here's just some aerial views around it. And hopefully you guys can kind of put some uh, ideas together on how to go ahead and create your camouflage. Uh, again, I'm not going to be building this block by block as I'm kind of just more showing you guys how I went about doing it and how you guys can do it for yourself. So um, anyways, hopefully that helps a little bit in terms of how you can kind of go about doing the camouflage um, and all that stuff. But really, that's kind of the main gist of it. I definitely do recommend trying to at least incorporate because I think it definitely makes the tank look a lot cooler compared to just the standard um you know, flat green. Anyways, though, that's going to wrap up this tutorial here for the Panther KF51. Hope you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This video from a link to my channel or this video if this does bring social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun, fan, and all that fun stuff. I get a big special thanks to Patreon supporter um, Archduke Beck for making this tutorial possible and as always feel free to check out my Patreon page link is always in my video descriptions with that though thank you guys again so much for watching as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe this is your 2 before and I'll see you guys next time